Firstly, I wanted to say um, a big thank you to Sex, Drugs and Helvetica for having me and, um, and thank you for Zach as well because he just completely organised everything and it, was, and it was great, which I think you need uh, when you've got creatives. Um, you know. <laughs> so a little bit about um, Round. I've been um, creative director of Round for um, uh, 12 years and um, we are based in, um, in the city in Flinders Lane. And I'm just going to show you some photos because place is very important to us and, and to our studio. So uh, we're about eight people and there's a couple of them um, in the studio here and in the, in the audience here from the studio, which is great. Uh, there we go. That's, that's the space, some of us working and the meeting room. And uh, what I wanted to, the project today that I really wanted to share with you all um, is a project uh, about a hotel and um, the reason that it was really interesting for us was it really shift, it, it had a shift in the way that we thought and the way we did things. And I think there are already thoughts that we were, we were working through, thoughts about identity and brand, um, but they really, it was a project that we were able to realise these thoughts on. And it was also with uh, developers, we've had a really bad track record, I'll be really honest, a uh, really bad track record of working with developers. and. Um, so I think we, you know, we were a bit apprehensive. But that's the client there, that's, uh, that's Nectar. And, um, and he was a, a developer with a difference. He had a huge appetite for change. And um, he, really, he really would want, he wanted to push the boundaries. And the next slide here is the actual, um, is a render, but it's of the whole um, new Acton complex which is actually in Canberra. Um, Canberra, we didn't know anything about either. And, and I guess the other thing is we've never done a hotel before and we've never, never done any work in Canberra. Um, and, and you heard uh, Chris was from Canberra today, so there's good things that have come out of Canberra, but at this stage we didn't know a lot about it. Um, but we, um, this is the whole of New Acton, and Chris probably could talk about this much more, about where it's situated. But you can see there the lake, the building that I'm going to be talking about is this end building here with all the greenery over it. So um, that hadn't been built and, um, and was in the process of building. And I think what was interesting for us um, was that the client just wanted to start by having these conversations. And there was a year of conversations before we actually got the job. Conversations about kind of approach and, and what identity was. And to help with these conversations, we would bring other people's work to the table to kind of have these conversations about, you know, being an, an interesting approach. So I'm going to share just a small amount of that thinking and some of those um, things we brought to the table in those conversations. First project here is from Lava, and um, it's, um, it's an interesting project. It was, it's... The client asked Lava to um, create an identity but keep the logo the same. And um, they, this identity is for um, Dibali and it's a centre for cultural and politics and which hosts debates and seminars, theatres, film, um, and it's aimed really um, at bringing up different social issues. When they were asked to, to do the identity, um, they they sort of were very mindful about what the organisation was about and they, they believed that they wanted to just highlight some of the importance in that, in that development. So they, they came up with a system and the system um, basically meant that the, the type changed always and there was, never, there was never set typefaces. They were always to do with what was being said. It was all about what was being said and how you could underline or highlight different things. So the identity wasn't, there wasn't rules in terms of kind of aesthetic outputs, but more rules in terms of process in which you went through to get the end result. The other one was again another lava piece, which um, was for actually, it was for a contemporary media festival. Um, and that was, the festival was all about experimental art and music. And the theme for the 2008 festival was about political and social boundaries in society. And what they developed was these, um, these, these masks, these kind of um, alter egos for the community itself. And um, every, every visitor was given a different, unique avatar. Um, and what was interesting to us was that they would take imagery that they'd find online, so basically um, reuse imagery, which, will, which you'll understand why I'm sort of saying it like that as this, this goes on, 
reuse imagery and they'd place it on these masks on top of the, the imagery that they'd find. So we like this idea that the designer doesn't create everything and, and how do they kind of access the world. We also, um, tone of voice was going to be extremely important to us with this project and um, almost just as important as the actual visuals. So we were looking at the tone of voice of Alan de Botton and um, his, I, I guess, his uh, philosophy of everyday life um, and, and how important that is. We really like the idea that right from the beginning, instead of the site hoarding having um, the construction company and the builder's logos on it, maybe we could give something back to the community. There could be these philosophies on the actual um, hoarding itself. It didn't happen, but it was a kind of idea. Um, and uh, we kind of would we'd keep pushing, trying to push these things. Then uh, this, the artist's work, Felix, and I'm not even going to say his last name, sorry. Um, someone else would probably do a much better job than me on that. But anyway, um, Felix had lost his partner and, um, through AIDS, and his work was all about giving back um, and the idea of kind of love and loss and deterioration. So these suites that are, are in, in the gallery, um, that this was in the Guggenheim, um, would they just encourage people to come and take these suites? And part of the work was about replenishing every day. Um, and I think we love this idea of kind of continual giving uh, and then replenishment. And how could we kind of take that idea? Chris has done it today with the, the things on your seats. And I think um, that idea of just being able to make something, give it, and not and not worry about what the cost is of that. Also. Um, Oliver Eliasson's work, um, this, is, this is actually when it was created for the Tate, but um, what, was, what was interesting is that the first time he actually did this work, it's 12 metres of Lego and, and it weighed about three tonnes. Um, and the first time he asked the local community to, it, so there are all those tiny little white cubes of Lego, and he, and he just had it all, this big, big pile of Lego, and he just said to the local community, I just want you to make make a city, um, you know, make, make whatever you want, but make, make these buildings and make a city. And it opened up this huge discussion um, about uh, the cities that we live in, the design of cities, the buildings, um, and what could be. And, um, and it was an absolutely beautiful result. It's travelled all around the world, and, um, and it's been documented. It's a really interesting idea of participation. So we, we love that idea as well. So how do you participate? What is a true participatory project? And lastly, the work of um, Lust. Lust were challenging um, the traditional idea of the author, the editor, the publisher, and the printer and the retailer. You know, that kind of world that we've all known that we live in and we live in those kind of sectors. And um, he was, they, were, they were sort of distorting that. And they produced this piece giving free access to data, asking the user to modify, um, pass it on, seeing if they could adopt and, and um, adapt and improve and then who was the actual original, um, and how do you become a co-author. So um, it's, a very, it's a very complex work, and, and I think, um, but it was that idea, and we went, we went into it in quite a big way, but there was that idea that we were trying to also get as part of the hotel. Oh, and then we just liked that wall as well. Um, we thought it was a cool wall, and um, we loved the idea that there were all these buildings being pulled down and uh, maybe the community could participate and, and make something, or some artists. While that was all going on with Nectar, you saw the photo of Nectar, and, and he did have a completely different approach. The, we, we actually found out there were these other clients as well, these kind of more clients focused on money and, and some of the kind of pragmatic um, things that hotels need. So um, we started to have a look at um, hotel technology, and this was all new to us. You know, t technology that said how soft your cushion, your, your pillow could be, and it would remember that for the next time you came and stayed. Um, and we also learned a lot of facts, um, one of them being that 80% uh, of all movies in hotel rooms happen to be adult movies or porn. And, and we were kind of going, because at, at that stage we were trying to sort of say, could you just watch, the, download things on iPads and how could this work? And, and, and there became all sorts of interesting things about what happens in a hotel room. So we, um, we, we decided to track some different user paths. We um, took 
and, and we do this a lot, actually, because we try and really understand what it would be like for different people engaging in this experience. And, um, and where are the touch points? What do they see? I mean, you know, because you, you, as a designer, you can get really fixated on, on a small detail and an identity on a piece of stationery. But what you have to actually do is, well, what we try and do is try and unfold a journey and unfold a journey for a person. So this was Lucy. She was a... Um, a young woman, she was independent and she was technology savvy. And we tracked her journey and, and, and how she was going to book, where she would find out about the hotel, um, and then all the way through to her trip there, how she actually engaged with the hotel, and then um, checking in and checking out. Now, she's technology savvy, so what was her journey going to be like compared to maybe Tom, who was an older businessman, um, you'll notice that the woman was like, you know, the young, technology-savvy one. Um, but the man was the older man, and um, he, was, he, was, um, he wasn't used to technology at all. So what was his journey going to be like? And his PA was going to book the room for him. And um, he wasn't going to come in and check in and not want to speak to anybody. He was going to need to see someone at a desk. And we're in this time at the moment where... Um, you know, in 20 years' time, you're probably not going to have so many of those kind of older businessmen. So we're at this time where we need to consider all of those people. And there were many other people that we tracked their journey, and we needed to make sure we understood how they were going to engage and what they were going to see and when. So all of that took a year, and we still didn't have the job. They'd flown us to Canberra a number of times. We'd been in big uh, meetings with a number of people, there were still other design companies that they were talking to, and they were paying us, but, um, but it, was very, it was very small, and, and you sort of didn't know where it was going to go to. So they wanted to give us a test project, and I thought I'd share this with you. This is, this is actually the final foyer for the hotel, and this is all the timber, but when they gave us the test project, um, it was actually a render we had, and a list of timber that, that was going to be actually inside um, the hotel foyer. This is all... Um, reclaimed, um, found timber, and, and there was many different types. So the project they gave us was to design a, um, a retail tenancy pack, and, and as I mentioned to you, we didn't have a very good history with property development, and, and retail tenancy packs were something that, that sort of scared us, I suppose. Um, so we had to convey a lot of information to potential tenants and um, convince them that this was the right place to um, you know, have, their, have their shop. So we decided the only way we could do this that was really reflective of the actual, um, of the building, was to create all the information out of wood. We didn't actually do it ourselves. We got a wood turner to do it. We, we produced these diagrams, and they were all based on um, facts. So this was all to do with Canberra's household income and um, quite dry facts, but to convey the information in a different way. This one here was about un un unemployment rates, in Canberra, apparently the lowest in Australia. Uh, customer catchment areas. And um, what else do we have? Uh, they, the, these two did have lines off them, but I just took them off for the presentation. So there was the um, office market and then hotel guests per night. So it was all about numbers and people visiting and how many people were coming, etc. cetera. Um, and they all came together and were put into this kind of box. And, 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 and it was really, uh, it really worked for them. Uh, um, it was something that Nectar felt comfortable going out and talking to tenants, and they got the right mix of tenants. So on the back of that, we got the job, and we started. And I thought what I wanted to share with you, first of all, was probably our beginning, which was looking at the architecture. The architecture was coming along. It was becoming really interesting. This was... This was the actual building that we're talking about. You saw the whole site before, and this is the actual building. We, um, this is the actual in construction, so there's no glass at this stage. It's a Fender Cazzolides building. It's an amazing building. Lots of concrete on one side, um, weaving in and out. These were all taken by um, Lee Grant, who was a um, in-house, a Canberra-based photographer, and she was in-house at the, at the time. So it was amazing having a client with an in-house photographer. Like, that's never happened. Um, and then this was some of the timbers that were being found. And then this is actually timber on the outside. What, what was really hard was um, actually trying to um, 
I understand the brief. The brief was sort of open-ended, and, and when you spoke to any one of the different clients, Nectar being the lead and the loudest voice, there was always a different, um, there was always a different brief. So we started off with, with most projects, we started off with sort of um, some strategy, and we worked very closely with Right Angle. And we, and, and we put this together. Um, we're a new kind of operation that turns the preconceived notion of what a hotel can be and should be on its head. Challenging conventions towards the prescriptive use of space and instead allowing patrons to make their own decisions and interpretations. Often this can only be accomplished by holding a mirror up to the world around us and having a good hard look. And, and it was important for us to get buy-in from all the stakeholders to, to the statement and to the values. So these were the, the 10 values. And we, we, um, when we came up with this, we actually produced, and I brought it along, you know, this, this document here, which actually went into each one of those values. And it spoke about the application and how we were going to um, get these across in different ways. I think, again, um, what was important was we were going to create something that needed to have a life outside of us being there. It needed to be able to continue to grow and evolve. And so these values were there as a kind of framing work to kind of allow that, that um, to allow it to grow, but with, with a set of things, that, the philosophies and ideas that were important. When we started the identity, we were kind of a bit overwhelmed by the values that we'd come up with, and we were a bit like, we were a bit stuck, actually. We were kind of like, oh, what are we going to do? So we really just, we just thought we're just going to go with these ones. Participation, disruption, provenance, humour, um, fun, and making, and see if with those narrowing it down a little bit, what we could create. I think what I'm going to show now is, is just a few slides. So we've got the job, and, and at the beginning of the job, we also, while we were creating these values, Nectar would get us in these rooms. He'd pay for a whole day for me to be in this room um, and um, sit with artists, friends of his, and we would kind of just talk about um, different things. Concrete poetry, they were very big on... Con I, I learned a lot about concrete poetry and brands and hotels and places. So it was, it was, a, really, it was a really unusual um, time. And I kind of, I guess from being in a busy studio where every hour you're kind of going, okay, what are we going to do, what are we going to do? I kept sort of trying to, um, in, these, in these days, I'd sort of treat them a bit like workshops and kind of go, okay, what have we got from this? What have we, and, and he would be like, doesn't matter, just, just be in, you know, just be part of this. And, and that was a really, it was a hard place to be. Um, and so while we were doing all this, we had different visuals that we brought up. Um, this was one visual that we liked. Um, it was about a conflict kitchen. I don't know if anybody's familiar with this project, but it's basically in America. Um, it's, a, it's a food operator, but they only, they only give food um, to people that are in conflict with America. So they only serve food America's in conflict with. And it was a really interesting thing that you'd go and buy this food, eat this food, have... Um, understand the provenance of it, and, then, and yet the place that you were living was in conflict with it. Um, this one here uh, was pretty obvious, but the kind of idea of green spaces and participatory green spaces and, and how to get hotel guests to become part of that. This piece here it was sort of about the, the everyday object and um, these works that were created from the everyday object. Um, and I think... We were, we were very fascinated in um, how to take the everyday and, uh, and, and kind of change that and nuance that. And this, this piece here was basically um, this net, um, but it was also about trying to make adults have fun and, and, and what did you have to do to kind of get them to have fun? So, you know, put them on a big trampoline to get from one side of a building to another, um, which didn't happen. None of those things happened, but they were all talking points. So then we started on the hotel naming, and there was a number of different names. And I, and I think from the values, um, we really wanted to go with something that was very default. So the name became um, Hotel Hotel. That's not how it ended up looking. That was just, that's just what it looked like at that stage of the project. So it was a place for people, people. And um, we worked on, um, we started to, start, started to bring the, the whole idea together. We started to just put it on some of the images that we were getting provided. This was some of the dummy um, mock-ups that they were making for the hotel room. Uh, this is some of Lee Grant's images of Canberra. 
And uh, this is hotel vernacular. We started looking at the kind of idea of hotel signage and, and, and this idea of, um, of hotels. And then we started looking at the kind of idea of default and, and default language. We also looked at, I'm going to get to the work very soon, I'm sorry, but it was a long process that we had to go through and I'm trying to, I'm trying to show that. Um, we looked at um, Buckminster Fuller's uh, ideas. One of them, you can never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model and make the existing model obsolete. And that really felt like what they were trying to do with this hotel and what we needed to do. So the only idea that we could really have that was true to all of those values was to beg, borrow, and steal, and um, not to create more, to, um, to actually, you know, uh, to create less. And um, so we went on this big mission. Uh, we also, there was this quote that we actually showed the client, um, bad artists copy, good artists steal. And we, we decided we were going to be good artists and we were going to steal, and we were going to steal whatever we could. It was about the, the idea of overprinting um, on stolen or sourced um, hotel material. So don't make anything new when there's, when there's so much material out there. Um, and we went on this big mission of trying to find stationery um, and trying to find excess stock. So we found different stationery. And, and actually, um, even though it was fairly hard, uh, we actually found there was quite a lot of um, excess material out there that um, had changed over the years. Addresses had changed as hotels had gone under. Um, the identities had changed. And, and, and actually, there were these kind of storage places that kept all of this old hotel material. So this is some of the, um, some of the material that we were finding. And we started to print the identity on top of it, the hotel identity. And you can see different versions of that. And this is really early in the concept stage. We started to, as we were starting to do this, we did start to get a bit worried and um, worried about the idea of ownership. The client loved this idea, but it was kind of who owns it and, and who owns this material. Um, this idea of um, a lawsuit maybe coming towards us was, was kind of getting really, we were getting a bit nervous about it. And, and the client was like, it doesn't matter, it doesn't, you know, it's not a problem. And we were kind of going, oh, you know, maybe not to you, but, but to us it sort of does. So um, <laughs> anyway, um, you can see here, oh, we also started to steal quotes as well um, and starting to put that on the material. So Drinking beer is easy, trashing your hotel room is easy, but being a Christian, that's a tough call, that's rebellion. That was the Alice Cooper quote. And we started to put these quotes in different places and, and, and started to steal different um, tones of voice. We also thought we could steal pencils um, and steal um, websites. So we thought we could steal other people's websites. And, um, and that, that slide there was meant to be, because Fabio was meant to be here, but he's gone. And... Um, but we stole other designers' work as well. So, um, you know, the, the crown ad there. So we stole um, laundry bags and, um, yeah, et cetera. And these were some of the quotes uh, that we started stealing. Um, we li especially like the one on the top, the top left. Um, and, and during that process, um, we thought one of the other things was, um, you know, there were certain things that the clients would sort of fixate on, and, and for some reason this client really fixated on what was, what was in the room that you could write on. And so we um, put an ad out to all of the people that were involved in the project, all of the, there was quite a few different architects, there was Suppose in Japan, Fender Cats Leaders, there was March Studio doing the foyer, and we thought we'd contact them all and see if we could get all of their process, we gave them all a bin, and um, we asked them to put all their process in that bin, and then what we did was we collated all of that, brought it all together, and this is, this is actually how it's ended up, which is, is great, it's the only piece right now that's ended up like that. Um, but collated it all and made these in-room notepads. There's enough there for about, I think, five years of notepads um, and uh, of, of um, the process of making.
And at, and at the same time, we were, we were trying to find pencils that, w that were true to those set of values. And we found um, this machine here that was, um, and I've forgotten the person's name, but it was a, it was a person at the Royal College of Arts. It was a, an artist, and she'd created this machine. And you take waste, building site waste, and you put it into the machine, and it, and it spits out a pencil, which we thought was a great idea. We actually... Um, got it and tried it and, and tried the pencils. They're not very good though, they kept breaking. And so um, by this stage we were kind of worried about a lawsuit, we had pencils that didn't work and we had some nice notepads. Um, <laughs> so it wasn't, it was a bit tricky. We, um, at the same time they needed to hire some staff. That's Jonathan, Nectar's brother, and that was the ad that went out, um, that we did. <laughs> and. Um, he, he modelled for that one. And we, um, but you can start to see how the identity is coming together. And um, at this stage, it was sort of a bit of a pause. So I thought, I'll just show you some other great images that were being taken. Um, ta images that Scotty Cameron started taking. Um, and they were really, th this is a mixture of Scotty Cameron and Lee Grant, actually, but they were all of the things that are being collected to go inside the hotel. Um, and also just some of the raw parts of the, of the hotel. Uh, a woman walking her dogs, but I think it's just an amazing image, actually. Um, the uh, different, different things that have been collected. And uh, the lift, trying to get the things in. And, so, and, and you can start to see how it's starting to come together, even though it's raw, some, how some of these pieces are coming together some of the tables that were being made. These are tables that are in the room that, that were all made. And, uh, oh yeah, there's, there's our pause. So by this stage, we were kind of, uh, it was getting pressing. We needed to get some material out there. We'd found all of this excess stock. We had, we had a, a lot of it that we could, we could access. But um, we started to go back to those values and the idea of the air miles became really important. And, Everything that we were going to save by using excess material was negated through the emails. Oh my goodness, one minute. Um, I've just been told I've got one minute. I'm going to really go quickly now. It was negated in the emails that um, we had. Uh, so, so from our sustainability, it wasn't going to work. So we started to um, print on a risograph with vegetable inks, and we started to use the, the actual photographs of the building, and we still had that tone of voice. And the risograph sort of had all sorts of weird and wonderful things happen, which was all part of the process of making. The hotel room cards, here's some of the material all coming together, the menus. And we, then we thought we'd also, we wanted the identity to live on, and, and so we gave them a kit of parts. And um, that's the kit of parts, some of the kit of parts there on the actual front desk of the hotel. Stamps and seals, they were really keen on a wax seal. Those things are really hard to do, and they nearly burn your finger when you, when you do it. But they really wanted one, and we gave them embossing tools. Um, that's the luggage tag there in the hotel room different pieces of signage. There's the notepads and the, the pencils that actually work on sustainable timber with printing on them. Um, In-room snacks, in-room material that went together, um, the toiletry bag and um, different pieces of artworks labelled. And then the signage. So um, right on the front doors, there was a place for people, people. We water blasted where possible, so we tried not to add more to the, the actual building. Um, that's the front desk, the concierge desk, signage going through the building, um, the room numbering, which was all on, on excess uh, waste. Um, when you were... <laughs> <laughs> the tone of voice, wherever possible, um, coming through. And um, the fire escape. <laughs> And this went on the back of, of the doors. Um, and, and down the bottom, and I haven't got time to go through it, but I was going to sort of show you that there was sort of a serious message and then, um, you know, a, a more light-hearted message all the way through. Uh, the, um, 
the website, and, and with the website, we, we, they had their own programmer, their own team, and we would sort of work with them and, um, and try to just uh, consult, I suppose, and um, refine where possible. I'm trying to make that sound a good process. But, um, again, uh, the email signatures there with um, that tone of voice wherever possible. Logs that went out, the, e the EDM, sorry, and um, confirmation of booking and pre-stay. And the ads, again, are the same. So that did stay the same, and, um, and the opening soon ad. And I think um, what I wanted to share with you at the end was a kind of piece that um, uh, sort of summed it all up. And it, it, it says, oh, we need a new design integrity. We redirect creative energy. We redefine the life cycle. We create ongoing value. We start with what's easy, easily available. We want sensible innovation. We invite everyone to participate. We create new owners. We enable you to share. And, and, and I think what we did was we left the project, um, and we're not working on Hotel Hotel anymore, but we believe that it's going to be an identity that will keep evolving, and, and we just started that ball, and we just started that process, and the time has changed where you actually kind of lock down a whole identity, and it's very tight, and that's what it's going to be like forever. It's, it's now time that, as designers, we kind of begin a process, and, and hopefully are able to just um, hand that on and so we've done our job and that allow others to be able to be part of that and participate in that. And that's all. Thank you.